71,000, which is the parking, the access, uh, accessible routes, and the assisted listening devices, oh. 71,000. Oh. So I, I apologize for that. Oh. Correct. Yeah. Those, those are the costs uh, that you have. 292, you put all of the bleachers in at one time, plus the, uh, that includes the accessible routes, system listing devices, and parking spaces, down to a rental, uh, which you kind of got it's $23,000 per week. So you have a fixed cost of $71,000 at that point. Now, the ADA listing devices, depending on what you, again, need to pay for. 2160 is the max. If you drop that number, those will reduce by a small amount as far as the number of required units. Same way with parking spaces. Next slide. Okay. What I handed to each of you in front of the uh, we're asked to look at another type of bleacher system, and if you'll go to uh, this particular package, it goes into one describing the type of bleachers that we just talked about. The building place bleachers are most cost that you saw just a moment ago. The 221, the 133, and the Those are the fixed bleachers. They're made with aluminum seating galvanized steel, they're made for outdoor use, they're made to stay outdoors, and they can be removed and relocated, but it, it's a very tedious, long-term uh, process. It takes about a week to tear them down and move them. That, that is a, uh, and they are, these are elevated bleachers. These have 16 rows, I believe there's about 16 rows up, similar to what is out there currently, except their uh, ADA, ADA requirements. The takedown bleachers are those that you would rent. Those are the rentals we just talked about. They're basically painted steel structures, frames, and they have wood hinges. They have, uh, the seating is made of wood. They cannot remain outside. Uh, again, they're a rental type of product and with limited exterior use, meaning you have to take them down as soon as they have been sold. Portable bleachers is what this particular package is going through. Is what can we do to have the bleacher systems that we could use at other locations? For example, Western Week, if we needed a set of bleachers, uh, parade bleachers, or we needed them at the Toyota River Park, where we could load those on a 20 uh, foot, 30 foot float or gooseneck trailer and move them from one site to another. Quick. And that's what this particular uh, package that we gave to you is going into. The uh, portable bleachers. Yes, yes quick question. Um, when you said extended exterior use, obviously you indicated that you set up sizes of the built in bleachers. What's the estimated lifetime? They're 15 to 20 years. I'm going to give you a summary into the building place bleachers. Again, these are the permanent ones. Uh, they provide build uh, years of service. They are made for the outdoor use. Very little maintenance on them other than to check for uh, loose bolts, wear that we may need from time to time. Uh, can relocate them, but again, they're more. Uh, difficult to do is one that you wouldn't move over to railroad park for a week and try to move back. They're, they're not made for that. I think a better description there, they're reusable. If you want to be decided at some point in time that you were not going to do anything at the rodeo grounds, you could pick those up and put them somewhere else. But the idea would be to put them somewhere else and put them as a permit. It's not that they're not back and forth. Back and forth. Are, these, are these the same? 20 life, 20 year lifespan, or are they? Yes. These are the 20 year lifespan. And, and on this particular item, these can, these are built. These are more structural, where you can increase the height of 
and these are about 16 rows in height. They go up, uh, and they are elevated, and they do have the ADA required seat place. On the next slide, please. On the takedown bleachers, these are the ones that are temporary rental type units that you'll see at uh, parades like in downtown Dallas. You'll see these uh, where they, they basically are scaffolding type units. They have uh, decking material, flooring material, and they are with wood fences. So they're made to go up, uh, used for a weekend event, tear down, put in a find area or building or shed structure. They are somewhat labor intensive, but they're not uh, too bad on for them to take them down. They're a four to six man crew and probably tear them down in, a, in 6 a.m. Okay. Could be used at city events. Again, these are limited exterior use. They're, once you use them, once you're through, you can put them in a shop or a shed or a barn for the next year. Next slide, please. On the portable bleachers, these are more what you see on uh, our football fields. They're approximately five to six rows in height. Uh, they'll seat 45 to 50, I believe these seat uh, 54 or so somewhere. And uh, they're lightweight aluminum. They are made for the outdoor use. They remain uh, outside at all our park areas. Can move them uh, from one spot to another again by just simply uh, three or four people or a, a tractor with a forklift or crank, put it on a uh, trailer, move it to the next site, drop it off, and it's ready for use. The, uh, again, they can be used at any of our facilities that we have, including Western Bay, Holiday Hall, etc. Next slide, please. Again, the portable bleachers, again, this was a product or a request to look at uh, after I sent the original information in. So we did check code compliant. They are uh, ADA and, and meet all the IBC and National Building Code requirements. There are five rows in height. We have several of those in here. They're a little different from what we have, I believe. They may be a little bit different from the picture, but basically the same five rows you can see. They're 10 feet by 21 feet, and again, from and loaded on the existing or on our existing fleet of vehicle tra uh, trailers. And these will have these will have the uh, ADA requirement seating on those that be between if you say two yeah. they'll have a platform that you can set the required seat on, on those particular you use the term conventional bleachers and I have built in bleachers and take that with Conventional bleacher is what I call the perfect, the, the building place. Okay. The cost of the portable bleacher is uh, 10 to 20 percent less than uh, that particular item. Uh, again, they're readily movable and they can, they can be outside all year long. The cons, uh, the negative side of this is they're limited <coughs> seating. Take up the, the three space area that we were talking about the rodeo grand, you'd get about uh, 600, five to 600. <coughs> and they would be at a low level. And that's one thing that uh, you know, what they have currently, you have elevated seating looking over the arena. These would be relatively flat to the ground and flat to the height. Correct. Well, would you would you have to build more if uh, ac uh, handicap accessible ones? If you had these, if you had enough handicap accessible spaces in these units, then the other units wouldn't have PHDA compliance. 
that's what I'm saying. Okay, so if you had one hole, you cleaned it, it was accessible. Yeah. Yeah. They usually have one, have a space with companion. You've got to have your companions to see. The rule is the person has to be able to go anywhere that anybody else can go. Oh. They, they cannot be segregated in just one. Oh. Well, they, they are everywhere else you go. Movie theater? Movie theater is the reason you challenged. It's a sleepy show. Football stadium, a basketball stadium. Parking lot. We'll be happy to have an expert consultant. Yes. We know one. We know one. We know one. We didn't get challenged by this one. Go to the next couple of slides. This is the uh, typical portable bleacher in case. Next slide. <laughs> What they do, they will have the ADA spacing on the first and second row. There'll be a ramp there. Sorry. No. It, it, as long as you provide it in a general area, basically, it, and we'll show you one on the next slide. Uh, maybe, you know, this is the type of built in place that you have currently out there with the accessible routes. And this is the takedown bleachers with the uh, board seating. Does nobody make a takedown bleacher with a little seating? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When you do, I think what happens is the five or nine spot or something? Yeah. Yeah. We check, we check further. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. They just don't check further. Again, what we looked at uh, is a couple of recommendations if you wish to proceed with continued use of the rodeo of, of the land for this particular event. Phase one is to start off with one set of bleachers, 1260, with all the access routes, making area site compliance placement of one concrete pad, that's the northeast corner pad, the pad closest to the uh, livestock chutes and, and, and corral area. That particular cost is 219000 Tina, can you go back to the map? Plus the I'm sorry? Plus the seven. Plus the seven. Plus the map, the drawing, right there. <laughs> what that would do, the concrete pad for the bleachers is 5,200 square feet, the larger pad, plus the, what I call the top right, or the far top right concrete pad of 2,200 square feet. Placement of the bleacher system, 1,260 seats on the larger pad, leaving the concrete area to the northeast for lawn chairs, seating, whatever you want to do there, you can put the portable restrooms there, any type of use that you wanted to use in phase one. Where I'm going with this, you move to phase two, you put a bleacher system on that particular pad site. If your event grows, use grows, you put the second set of bleachers on that particular site. And then phase three basically goes into pouring the third particular, or specific pad between the two, the smaller pad, and placement of the third set of bleachers at that location. That's the phasing that we came up with to accommodate this particular use. We need to go back to the recommendation. So there are the three recommendations. Again, uh, moving from 1260 on phase one, phase two increases Capacity to 1800, phase three is, is the final of the existing site, 2166. Plus, again, adding 71,000 on whichever <coughs> is our, our, the first item that we go to the different phase. Council, what that gets you is an arena that is available to the general public at each of those incremental capacities. Um, could be used obviously for the rodeo event, but could also be used for other things. It's not the only thing we use it for. It happens to be the only thing we're really using the facility.
facility for it today, but that's not to say that we have to limit it to that. It's all subject to what you want to do and whatever agreement you work out with uh, any partners that you might have. Uh, the other point I would raise is that one way to, to kind of think of what we've been doing with the Saddle Club uh, more recently perhaps than in the past is that you're basically contracting with them to put on an event. It's really about all you're doing. You're providing a facility for that event, and if you want that event, they're perfectly capable of putting it on if they have historically. Uh, by investing in the facility, you do open it up for some other things that you might be able to use for other events that you might have in mind in the future. I don't know of any at this point in time, but it certainly uh, is a possibility. But again, the, the primary purpose would be or one way of thinking about this is from the standpoint of whether you want the event first, and then what do you have to do in order to keep the event going in Louisville at this location, or if there's some other location you want to talk about, it's a completely different story. We haven't gone into the analysis on that. One other item I'd like to bring up the Saddle Club sent me a, a copy of their events for this year. They basically have 25 events. My understanding at the site, most of those are play day. The largest event is the Labor Day weekend event, which again is their fundraising. It's how they can support and operate their system or operate the program. Steve, just so I'm clear, um, this phase one, phase two, phase three is actually option one, the total 292, correct? Yeah, it's 71 to the yeah. So, but that 219, if I add those three numbers together, that gives me 292. So the 71 is built into this slide, or it's not? The 71 is built into this slide. Thank you. So it's it's 292 total. Right. You get you get the listening devices in phase one, the parking in phase one, the walkway accessible the routes in phase one, the large bleacher system, which they have currently, generally in the same position that it is today, plus a concrete pad on the northeast corner where the old, the northeast corner bleacher was originally, or last year before they took it down. And again, we, you could take that pad out. I was just looking at it so it would be a place if somebody had a lawn chair and wanted to, to have that area, or you wanted to put more restrooms or you needed a concession, if they wanted to bring in a concession area to be on concrete base, you would have a concession area over there to work. I've got a question maybe some of the experts in the room can answer. Um, is the existing arena capable of hosting uh, all of your typical rodeo events? Are there any limitations? Like, is, is it not wide enough for certain types of events? or? Not long enough for certain types of things. Uh, I can do that. Uh, first of all, my name is Michael Wheeler. I'm the president of the South Club, and I've been uh, involved as a member. Could, of, could, you, could you give your name and address for the record? Mm -hmm. Michael Wheeler, 326 Leaning Tree, from Texas, 76249. Uh, I've been involved with the Saddle Club since 2005 and in some capacity as either a board member, vice president, or president. So I've got some pretty good knowledge of, of this and, and the rodeo. Uh, in terms of what can be, what types of rodeos, currently we host a UPRA rodeo, that's United Professional uh, Rodeo. Because of the size, we've actually been contacted by the stock contractors that we use and, and others. Uh, about putting on a PRCA rodeo, which is what you would see at maybe your Fort Worth or some of the other bigger locations. Because of this, basically because of the parking, there's not enough parking to warrant that big of a, that grand of, a, of a, an event. PRCA is kind of the, the, the pro version of UPRA, which I would, I would consider that a, more of a semi-pro league. At any rate, yes, because of the size, there are limitations with our PRCA. And the, and the reason I ask the question is because we're going to put it in a bunch of concrete, 
and the arena doesn't allow for something like a PRCA option, um, would it make sense to structure that concrete so that it could change? But if you're telling me that the arena is a decent size, it's more of an issue of parking and seating, then, then that's fine. I just didn't want to lock us into a particular size if right. perhaps we explore it. Oh, the arena itself can host all the events are essentially the same. Okay. It's just who sanctions it. Uh, PRCA would hold an event at a complex this size just because there's not enough people. Mr. Backus brought up an interesting point that there are no uh, citizens in your club, is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. Actually, I, I, I can, that's somewhat correct, but not exactly. We actually have 34 families that are members. Uh, of those 34 families, there's actually 90 members and 50 riders. Now, within that, uh, I don't know if y'all have seen the roster. We actually have uh, members that live all over Denton County. Now, that's not to say that several of us uh, haven't lived in Louisville at one point or, or another in our, in our lives. And unfortunately, as it will happen, uh, cities grow up around the country. If you're going to own horses, you got to be where the country's at. So, uh, that doesn't mean that all these families that do live in Crum or Salina or wherever, don't travel back to this place, back to Louisville, uh, to spend their time, volunteer their time to put on a rodeo for this community and, and provide other things. Uh, you had mentioned, if I can have a moment to speak on some other things. Well, why don't you 